Okay. So before exactly, get, I'd like to make sure that Planning Commission, if you have any questions regarding Kate's presentation, this would be a good time to ask. Mr. Chairman? Sure, Victoria? I have um, an inquiry. Sure. I would like to know what law or statute allows us to act as a legislative body while violating our bylaws. Who said we're not following our bylaws? We're not following our bylaws in multiple ways right now. We had a decision about that. Be happy to talk about that later. We have that on the agenda. So that would be but, something. But your assessment of violating the bylaws is not necessarily shared by all of us. The issues that Victoria is referring to here include, but are not limited to the fact that the current chairman of this commission is serving a third term where the bylaws stipulate that only two consecutive terms are permissible for a chairman with at least a year interim between serving terms and so therefore the uh, the chair is in violation of the bylaws the other issue is with regard to town residents serving on this board which only has jurisdiction over the unincorporated areas of the county. It's, this means that there are people who are acting as a quasi-legislative uh, body and a quasi-judicial body that are making law and passing judgments on uh, issues that will not affect them. It's the people who live within the towns are governed by planning and zoning laws that are uh, specific to the towns and not under the jurisdiction of the uh, Planning Commission, which is only responsible for the unincorporated regions of the county. In other words, these people are making law and passing judgment on jurisdictions in which they do not live and will not be affected by their decisions. This would be like if we in the unincorporated portions of the county started passing laws that uh, stipulated that people who live in town may only drive their vehicles outside of town limits on Sundays. It's uh, ridiculous and there's a long standing uh, history going all the way back to the Magna Carta of this legal principle that you cannot make laws under which you will not be curtailed. And the uh, county attorney has issued an opinion that because the state statute only requires that members of such boards be residents of the county, that he's decided that his opinion is that it's just fine to have people serving on this board that are not affected by its actions, which I believe is an incorrect uh, opinion, but I'm not an attorney. That's your opinion? No, no, we can read Do our you bylaws. you have a legal opinion? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call for a timeout here because they are in the audience as well as other members of the community at this time. Thank I you. understand that. Thank you. I do believe it's in the best interest of the community to hear that we are governed by Robert's Rules of Order. And Robert's Rules of Order, when we are in violation of our bylaws, every decision we have is rendered null and void. So any action taken by this board while it is in violation of its bylaws is illegal and null and void. What this means in practicality is that all decisions and actions by the board can be questioned in court and probably succeed and that it's essentially a waste of everyone's time and the taxpayer money because the taxpayer ends up footing the bill for the legal expenses of the county to have this board operating um, outside of the confines of its bylaws. And so basically everything they do is null and void until they can get back in line with the bylaws that govern the board. Anything we come to tonight may be rendered null and void because of the violations in our bylaws. And if there's a controversy or somebody wants to contest what we do, that's something that can happen at a later date. Is what law allows us to violate our bylaws and still act in a legislative capacity. And we are creating laws and voting on them 
Is that not a legislative capacity? We are not a form of governmental branch right now. You know, I would rather hear whatever the county attorney's opinion is on this, rather than to listen to Victoria, who I don't believe has a law degree and is just you filing our legal stuff. Filing it. So I'd like to go yeah. on with this. That's yeah, so crazy. Roberts Rules Order 33, Section 3 of Parliamentary Inquiry. To obtain information, the chair's duty is to answer such questions as it may assist in the appropriate motion, may assist in the rise of a proper point of order, and might help the commission to understand the parliamentary situation at hand. We must hold the respect and the confidence of the people and shall carry out all of our duties for the benefit of the people. They shall therefore avoid anything that is a violation of the public trust or even creates a justifiable impression among the members of the public that trust is being violated. Point of order then. Point of order that we are breaking our bylaws right now. Okay. Right. And, and it may, everything we meet that here may be in violation of that. And we're going to still move forward. If someone did, so determines that our, whatever we do tonight can be rescinded, that'll happen at a later date. So I want to move forward. The problem is we cannot move forward because we are we are governed we by collectively the parliamentary. We collectively as a group can decide what we, we want to do. We would need an attorney to weigh in on what you're what you're. Or we can just read the because laws. you're you're <laughs> claiming we're in violation, but you can disagree all you want. That's, but that's I can fine. state laws. I mean, I, I, I agree to disagree. Let's agree yeah, to disagree. We're going to move forward. We bring this to a close. In this rules of order, there is a motion on the table. Sydney made a motion to proceed with proc. Was yes. there a second to that? I seconded that. Uh, Here's okay. the thing: no motion takes yeah. precedence yeah. over a parliamentary inquiry, and it must. So what is your? You're, so you're not a parliamentary. You're not an attorney. In Roberts We're going to move order, forward. Every single one of us, as Let's members take a of the commission, has a right Let's take to a debate vote. to bring so forth a motion. This is a secondary and stepping motion, which means that you cannot override it. You do not have to second it, and it must be dealt with before. This is not a motion. Can you recognize your position? So at this point, the illegally serving chairman, uh, Tom Kay, stepped down for that meeting, or that was his intent at the time, and I don't know how he expected to resume his role as the chairman without having to be elected to that position again. As it turned out, he did end up stepping down and the vice chair became the chair and they're electing a new vice chair. In that meeting, uh, Carl Holm advised the board that they could simply repeal their bylaws and have no bylaws whatsoever, which would be awfully convenient for those who wish to ramrod things through without order and public consent. So some of the members of the planning commission were quite riled by Victoria's confrontation of them. And they approached the uh, county commissioners and asked them to press charges of misconduct and dereliction on Victoria and have her removed from the board. I'd like to bring forward from President Theodore Roosevelt. Life brings sorrows and joys alike. It is what a man does with them, not what they do to him. That is a true test of his mother. Well, I've got another Theodore Roosevelt quote for you. Behind the ostensible government sits enthroned an invisible government, owing no allegiance and acknowledging no responsibility to the people. To destroy this invisible government to befoul the unholy alliance between corrupt business and corporate politics is the first task of the statesmanship of today. So on the agenda, the next county commissioner's meeting was the issue of pressing these charges against Victoria and removing her from the planning commission board. And there was an overflow crowd. There is some question as to whether or not they can even conduct this meeting if they are not in a room that's able to hold all of the public that wishes to attend, but we'll lay that aside for the moment. There was the constituent uh, comment period in front of the meeting, as there always is. There were quite a few of us who spoke 
in defense of Victoria and one other member of the planning commission who spoke in favor of her removal. And you heard him shouting around there in that earlier section. And then Victoria went on to defend herself and explain her thinking and her uh, rationale in very erudite, well-educated terms. Public trust is at an all-time low, and by removing me, you remove the only low-income farmer that sits on your commission, which is the only accurate representation of a large portion of your community. I also ask that you host a formal investigation of your planning commission and the staff members of to enforce the same set of laws and standards that you're trying to enforce on me right now. Thank you all for your time. We've moved item 11 to item 1. Board's consideration of removal of Planning Commissioner Victoria Turner for misconduct and non-performance. Ms. Turner, you're welcome to join us up front if you'd like. Secondly, miss, or the non-performance of duty, as I stated previously, I stated on the record, which was not put on the record by, by the Planning Commission staff, even though I specifically requested it be put on the record, state statutes that I believed I was in conflict with. Therefore, I had a conflict of interest, and it would have been illegal for me to vote on that matter at hand. Thirdly, I was on my phone because the information that gets sent to us is via email, and I was reading the information on my phone. These charges are inaccurate, and, and as we've heard before, there's public video that could be viewed to make this decision. And in that video, you will hear your, your other planning commission members saying, we know we're breaking the law, but we're going to do it anyway. And if somebody wants to take it up in court later, they can do that. Yep. Right. That is yep. a quote from your planning commission members. That is misconduct. It is against the rule of law for us to sit here and try and press charges on me that you are not going to evenly enforce. The rule of law in this country states that laws will be enforced evenly among all people. This is a personal attack on my character, on my views, and because people are angry that I embarrass them. They are angry at me for being a young lady new to the commission and have taken that had taken time to do my research. That is it. They're angry that they didn't take the time and that they are not going to be allowed to do whatever they please anymore because we the people are aware of what they're doing and the laws that they are breaking. It is public knowledge now that the commission below you has broken many laws and is continuing to do so. And this step of retaliation against me is another violation of laws imposed on your board, our board, and the community. You, retaliation for me simply asking, and, and I will state, you know, my point of information was, what laws do we follow on this commission? In this um, attempt to construe my actions, it says that, that my point of information was answered. In that video, you can see my point of information was never answered. Not a single member on that PC can give me one law that we follow. Not a single one of them. Not the staff, Carl giving um, legal advice to his commission when he was not asked to and is not able to give legal advice, was completely uncalled for and inappropriate and exceeds his jurisdiction and his duties. Everything that's been happening up until this point has been completely lawless, completely with disregard for the members of our community. They have not been represented. And here we are today. That, that's all I have to say is that this is came to a shock as a shock to me. I, I expected that maybe you guys would get a lot of pressure and, and decide to remove me, but the fact that you're actually trying to press charges on me for literally asking what laws do we follow? The amount of disrespect I received from fellow members saying that they were not going to listen to me, that I would not keep talking. That is not how the commission works. We all have equal rights to talk to ask questions, to debate, and have answers to our questions. My, answer, my question was not answered. I was continuously shut down and ridiculed. My intelligence was insulted multiple times by many planning commission members, as well as the intelligence of the people in the crowd pointing to the members saying, these people don't know anything. That is inappropriate. That is biased. 13.1 of our bylaws. Members cannot show bias. This is where we are. This is outrageous, in my opinion. On my very first meeting, I was told, you are not capable to serve this position. You don't have enough knowledge or experience. These people have never met me, never talked to me, 
They don't know a single thing about me, and yet they feel that they can say those things to me because of my Asian gender. That is not okay. Why would they tell me that? You are not capable to do this position. They don't know me. They've never met me. That was the first time I'd ever spoken to a single one of them. And that's the kind of comments I was receiving from my very first meeting. That, that is where I'm coming from right now, is that I have been treated with the utmost disrespect. And I tr I'm very, I try to be well composed. I try to be very fair and accurate with the things that I'm saying. I'm not going off biased opinions. I'm not trying to, to ruin anyone's character. This is all, these are all quotes. These are all things that can be found on the internet. These are all things that your constituents are watching happen. And then most people turn around and tell them what they can and can't do. But they're not following any set of laws themselves. And that is why we have 600 plus people showing up in outrage, is because they're not being represented. The, the commission make, voting and drafting laws in are not listening to them. I mean, we had members of the planning commission tell constituents, you're overreacting. <laughs> I just wanted to know, what laws do we follow? And if you watch the video, you'll see me reinstate that multiple times. Please answer my question, what laws do we follow? They say, fine, what do you want, what do you want? I said, I want us to have an honest conversation about are we following the laws? They say, we're well, not going to talk about this. We have Steve Schrock actually say, we've already decided this, and not all of us agree with you. That's an open admission of closed door meetings between the PC members. On, on the record, this is what people are upset about. He is telling me that I have no right to speak because they have already, behind closed doors, made a decision on my point of information. I don't understand how we can go about this in any other way than to, to formally investigate and look at the conduct of other members as well as myself. And, and, and the rule of law apply the same, the same rule to every member of the PC and go into their conduct and things that they have said and done and gestures and, and see how many of them are guilty of misconduct. Mm -hmm. It's abundant in the planning commission. I move that Victoria Hope Turner be removed from the Delta County Planning Commission Board. Does the Planning Commission need uh, to get their house in order? Maybe so. Yes. So, but that is independent of the Board of County Commissioners. Okay. I just do want to state that I can't get the Planning Commission in order. The people can't get the Planning Commission in order. They're not going to hold themselves accountable. So, again, we're stuck at where do we go to get back in line? So, the motion dies for lack of a second. <laughs> it was uh, mentioned also in this meeting that the state attorney general has been contacted with regard to the corruption within the county over here. And so we'll see what comes of, of that on the state level. So... Uh, only one commissioner, uh, Mike Lane, made a motion to have her removed. Don Supes had already been in contact with Victoria and assured her that he would not be voting for her removal. And, um, well, Koontz also abstained from seconding that motion. And so it died with the lack of a second. The vice chairs become the chair of the planning commission but there are still people living in the incorporated portions of the county serving on the board. I believe there are three of them. And so the actions of this board at present, in my estimation, are null and void. And so essentially going back to the time when these non-unincorporated residents began serving on the board, any action that they've taken is highly dubious and questionable. So for now, uh, Victoria remains on the board and doing the good work of representing the actual interests of the people in the county. And she's essentially the only one or at least the most powerful voice doing that at this present time. They're working on uh, redlining the 2021 code for revisions and from watching bits and pieces of these work group sessions, I can already see 
that they have not hurt us and they're not going to address our concerns and this fight will carry on. So thanks for tuning in and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to stay posted with this story and all the other things that we're doing over here. Have a good one.